Okay, so what we'd like to talk about in this video here is what happens when we combine a capacitor and a resistor together in a circuit. And what we'll find out is we start getting something called a time constant. We get some electrical effects going on that take a very well-defined and characteristic time. Let me demonstrate uh, to you why that would be. Suppose if we had a capacitor here which is completely empty and we took a 9 volt battery here and we connected it to the capacitor the question before us is how long does it take before the capacitor becomes fully charged? It turns out we discussed that these capacitors can be charged up, they can't store electrical energy, but the question is how long does it take? They only accept so much charge before they refuse anymore. So the question is if I attach this wire to this here, bang, like this, right here, and I start a stopwatch which says T is equal to zero, about how long will it take until the capacitor is full? And in a case like this here, it turns out that the full time here, so in other words, the time it takes to get full, is going to be very fast, maybe on the order of, a, let's say, one nanosecond or so. That's one billionth of a second, bang, the capacitor is full. So when I was running this demo in a previous video, when I connected the battery and waited for a long time, that was totally unnecessary because the battery becomes full very, very quickly. Okay. So as you might guess then, there's no reason why I couldn't build a circuit that looks something like this here. Why couldn't I take the same capacitor that I was using here, the same battery, something like that 9 volt battery like this here, there's a positive, there's a negative. Let's connect it again like this. But instead of connecting it directly to the other side, directly to the capacitor, let's run through a resistor here that has some resistance R first, and then connect that to the, resistor, the, the capacitor here and say bang, put them together, write a T is equal to zero. And the same question, how long do you suppose it takes the capacitor to fully charge when there's this resistor in here. And we'll assume that the capacitor in both these cases here has the capacitance given by the symbol C. How long does it take to charge? It turns out in this case here that the time it takes to be full is equal to the product you get when you multiply the R you chose by the C. So this is what we mean by time constant start to develop here. It takes a certain amount of time now for the capacitor to charge because the resistor is slowing the flow of charge out of the battery down as it goes on to the capacitor. And as you also might, that, that's why the time to be full depends on R. But as you might guess, the amount of capacitance also affects how long it takes the capacitor to be full because obviously, as you might guess correctly here, larger capacitors take a longer time to fill than smaller ones do. Here's a larger one, here's a smaller one. This one takes more time to fill. So it'll depend on what your capacitance is for sure, but it also depends on the resistance that you have because the resistor is sort of setting the flow rate of charge out of the battery. So it turns out if you just multiply the two, that gives you the time constant for becoming full. And it's also the, the same argument also applies that if you wanted to discharge a capacitor, that is if you wanted to do something like this, Suppose here's your capacitor like this. Suppose the capacitor was totally full. Put some charge on it like this, totally full like that. And suppose you wanted to so-called discharge the capacitor by maybe running it through an LED or something as we did in a previous video here. So you could certainly connect the negative side to the negative side of the LED here. And if you connected the positive terminal through a resistor over the positive terminal of the LED, the question is how long would all of this charge how long would it take for all this charge to be used up by the LED is the same sort of question and the answer is the same way here. So maybe we can write down here, we'll write T to empty is also equal to the product of R times C. So because you're free to choose whatever R and whatever C you want, you're also free to choose how long these times sort of occurring. So let me give you a little demonstration now of this in the discharge effect. The discharge is a bit more easier to see because you can see the sort of the LED come on as we saw in a previous video. So let's disconnect sort of our discharge wire here for a moment. Let's get the capacitor charging up. Although I know a capacitor connected directly to battery gets fully charged in about a nanosecond so I don't really need to wait. But what we'll do first is let's discharge the capacitor through the LED first through our 100 ohm resistor. So I'm going to connect the 100 ohm resistor there and there. So the 100 ohm resistor is going to sort of set again that flow rate that the current will have as it leaves the capacitor. Okay, and let's see if we can even do a quick calculation here. Okay, the capacitor that I have installed here is a 1,000 microfarad capacitor, 1,000 microfarads, and the resistor is 100 ohms. So if I just multiply the two, now you have to be a bit careful here with the micro in here 
but what I know here is that a thousand here is 10 to the third and micro is 10 to the minus 6 and then I have a 10 to the squared here for 100 here so I'm just sort of looking at the powers of 10 to give an estimate right here so this is going to be something like 10 to the minus 3 times 10 squared and that's going to be something like 0.1 so 0.1 seconds so if I try to discharge this 1000 ohm capacitor excuse me 1000 microfarad capacitor through a 100 ohm resistor I'm claiming it should be fully discharged in about a tenth of a second and we saw this in a previous video let's do a lice out to sort of see here and just try to we won't do any precise timing here but let's see if, if if the LED sort of comes on and gets dim in about a tenth of a second and I'll do an alligator one how here's this so three two one alligator one I don't know I think it was sort of more like maybe half a second but it was definitely less than a second but in either case it was a number that wasn't too different than a tenth of a second so we're sort of looking at a system here that gets completely discharged I'm going to say in about a tenth of a second. I'm kind of happy with the result. If you look carefully, the 0.1 actually only means when the capacitor is approximately 67% discharged. We won't worry about that, but I hope you agree that we saw something happen here definitely in less than a second. Okay. Let's take the 100 ohm resistor out. And let's put in my 2200 ohm resistor here, something like this. Go ahead and put that in there like that. Okay. So I'm just going to discharge. The capacitor now let's get it charging up here again in a nanosecond but i'll make it in there let it charge while we talk about this here so now well, let's see we have a different time constant now we still have the 1000 microfarad capacitor sitting there but now we have a 2200 ohm resistor i've got my it's red 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 i'm going to make it a bit easy on myself here and i'm going to say it's a 2000 something like that i'll ignore the 200 for now because i want to need to do a little math in my head here again this is a 10 to the 3 times 10 to the minus 6 there's a 2 in here, and the 1,000 is going to be a 10 to the 3 in there, something like that. So what I'm looking at here is the 10 to the 3 and the 10 to the 3 are 10 to the 6, and there's a 10 to the minus 6. So all these powers of 10 are just going to go away. I'm sort of left with a time constant here of 2 seconds. So by increasing the resistor to about 2,000 ohms, 2,200 technically, I should see the light bulb, excuse me, the LED, become fully discharged, not in a tenth of a second anymore, but in about 2 seconds. And let's go ahead and test that and see if we can get that here. So three, two, one, alligator one, alligator two, all, yeah. Seems like to me my alligators were a bit off there, but I'm definitely seeing the capacitor fully discharged through that LED and definitely on the order of a couple seconds now, not the tenth of a second like we saw before. So see, what we're doing here with this capacitor is we're able to sort of set in electronics how fast something is allowed to happen, and that's incredibly useful. Uh, as we'll see in some other circuits that we're going to see is coming up. But the odd part about all this is, uh, well, I'll tell you the odd part in just a second here. Uh, what this is called, of course, the time constant here. In physics and engineering books, it's often given with a simple tau. It's always R times C. And it's just kind of amazing here that if you multiply an R, which has units of ohms, and you multiply a C, which has units of farads, the total answer you get something like that is the second so an r times a c d does give a time constant in seconds like that and also technically as you watch the led sort of discharge there um, if say we wanted to say right what is the charge q is a symbol for charge as a function of time on the capacitor it starts fully charged like this but the decay is sort of an exponential like this. It sort of goes down like this as it goes. It doesn't go straight down. It doesn't bow or anything. It's an exponential decay there. And likewise, if we want to charge a capacitor using a battery or something like that, an empty capacitor starts here at zero like this, and the charge builds up exponentially also. It should flatten out up there and reaches some maximum charge because capacitors always become only accept so much charge when they're charging right here. So this is sort of your charging cycle right here. And over here, this is your discharge charging cycle. There's a negative exponential here that eventually goes down to zero and arrives at three some asymptote up there. So capacitors do hold only so much charge. That's all the technical aspects of the thing here. But just keep in mind that the time constant just depends on C and R, the product of the two. And as we conclude this video then, um, that's sort of what happens. Again, just to recap, if you multiply R times C, that's where your time constant comes from. 
They're exponential in nature here, drops off exponentially, exponentially there too. That's why at the very end of our discharge cycles here, we sort of had to look very carefully to see anything changing anymore because these exponents get very, very slow as you go. And that in a nutshell is what happens when you combine a capacitor and resistor. You get these time constants.